Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Chromaticraft tutorial series. Uh, in this episode, we're going to go over uh, a few um, th new blocks. We're going to go over the uh, RF radiator and then the fluid radiator, hopefully. But first, I'd like to clear up a couple of things. Um, Reka commented on some of the videos, and we need to clear up a couple of stuff, just so that you guys don't go away with the wrong impression, because I definitely don't want to give you... Uh, misinformation. So first things first, the elemental manipulator, if you look at the um, the pie chart in the upper left, uh, it's important that you know that the manipulator itself is not actually storing this uh, this energy. The lumen energy that gets stored in there is stored on your character. Um, nothing at all to do with the manipulator. Uh, you know, the manipulator makes use of that, but it, it's not related to the manipulator itself, okay? So that, even before you get one, you can go into your inventory and you can um, burn stuff in the Lumen incineration. And you will have Lumen energy on your character, um, and you'll be able to look at it, you know, when you get your uh, elemental manipulator. You know, you, you, and then you can see that little GUI, and you'll have energy in there. So it's not stored in the manipulator, it's stored uh, per character, okay? Um, also, when I was talking about runes, uh, and the energy types in relation to the crystal brewery. I, I basically went through and, and mentioned like what each one does. Well, that wasn't entirely accurate. Those were just, you know, some of the effects that they have. If you want to know what the uh, types of energy are all about, you should go into your uh, chromic lexicon, cr go over here to basic crafting where it says crystal energy, and it'll give you a rundown of uh, what each one of them is, is about. So karma is about protective and protection and defense. Kajani is about uh, nature and living things. Kuro is is magic itself. Uh, Ruskia is the earth. Nila is light, um, and so on and so forth. So this is the best place to go for information about that. Um, in that regard, also this thing, the um, Luminware. Oh, and and I'm not going to be using the um, night vision anymore. It, it does tint the screen a little bit blue, so it might make the colors show up uh, not completely accurate. So we're not going to do that. The Lumen Wire has multiple modes. Uh, in the basic mode, which is the uh, light blue color, it's a player detector. So it redstone uh, activates, uh, and it also it, it has non redstone modes. Uh, it's got it's got other modes where it'll send out different kinds of signals, but I actually I, apparently, but I actually don't know how to do that. Um, so for now, I'm going to show you some of the other modes that this thing has, but it does have additional modes as well. Um, first, you whack it with the manipulator, right click, and it'll change to uh, a dark blue color. It still activates in response to um, me, the player. Um, I'm not sure what else it uh, reacts to. It doesn't react to um, to mobs. That's a, that, those are those are different colors. Okay. So I'm not 100% sure what this mode um, what this mode does, except that it it does detect me. Uh, but this mode, the red one, that I do know. So this one doesn't turn on when you walk in it. It actually turns on when hostile mobs pass through it, which is actually quite useful. Um, so you can use that to turn on and off, you know, some sort of defensive thing when a when a mob a hostile mob uh, comes through. Uh, not triggered by neutral mobs like pigs. Um, but if we whack it again and we go to green, come on, dude, walk. Take like one step forward. Seriously. Green is neutral mobs. So these pigs will trigger the green bean. But um, if I kill them, I will not trigger the green bean. And the spiders will not trigger the green bean. Only a neutral mobs. And I imagine friendlies. Um, but maybe not. How would I get a friendly mob to test that? I'd have to get a wolf in here, probably. Okay. So, then there's this one, which is not the same as that one. This is like a sort of teal color. And it does turn on when I touch it. And it does turn on with pigs. And it does turn on with hostile mobs. So, I'll have to do that again so you can see it. Okay, so it does turn on with hostile mobs. So that's leading me to believe it's basically, you know, a character detector mode at this point. So it'll it'll detect, you know, players and it'll detect all kinds of mobs. Um, then if we whack it again, it goes yellow and it stops detecting mobs. In fact, this mode is an item detector. 
So it'll go off when an item passes through it. All right? So it can be any item. It can be these pork chops. And it doesn't matter how many are in there. As long as at least one drop uh, is in the beam, it'll, it'll be activated. I can think of actually quite a few uses for this item detector. Um, I'll have to figure, I'll have to mess around with it. Uh, and then we end up at this sort of uh, tealy color again, which actually is not this one. There, there's more settings. And this doesn't seem to activate when I touch it. It doesn't activate with uh, drops. It doesn't activate with mobs of any kind. I actually don't know what this mode is. I'll have to, we'll have to get, go through the code again uh, and, um, and look at it and figure it out. But in the meantime, uh, and then there's white. Um, now, I'm assuming these are all related to the colors that, they're, that they are. So white is basically like it holds all the colors together. So I'm assuming, based on the activity, this is basically a detect everything setting. Because it turns on with drops, it turns on with me, uh, it turns on with the pig, so neutral mobs. Um, there's his drop right there is turned on. And it also turns on with hostile mobs. So I'm assuming that white is basically detect everything. Um, and then I think it goes back to the standard. Yeah, and that's this one. So it's got a lot of settings, a couple of which I'm not sure on yet. Um, we'll get, uh, so once I figure that out, that'll be added to the beginning of a future video. But for now, there's at least several settings in here that you, you now know what they do. Um, for instance, this red one, uh, if it's related to the rune colors, um, which it probably is, uh, Karmir is the color of uh, defensive capabilities and detecting hostile mobs is related to uh, defense. And then green is, well, let's see. Let's see if this, it, does this correlate? I don't know if it correlates perfectly. It could be nature and living things, but then that color could also be um, as Vesti for movement mobility. But, you know, I, I think there's a relation, but I don't know 100%. So anyway, that's that. Uh, the lumen wire is definitely more useful than just a trip wire. It's got a lot of settings that we can probably make a lot of use of. And I'm going to see... Uh, I'm going to try and, and come up with something that utilizes this uh, in a good way. And uh, as soon as we get that, um, as soon as I get that done, I'll, uh, I'll show it off. So, uh, now that that's out of the way, um, and I'd like to, you know, apologize to Reiko for making mistakes earlier. <laughs> um, I think there was, there was something else that I, that I got wrong, but I, I can't remember it now. We're going to come over here back to our casting room, and we're going to cast something new. So. If we go into our lexicon and we go back over here to rune crafting, we have this cool little um, block called the Redstone Flux Radiator. Um, I do a lot of stuff with immersive engineering and, and mods that require uh, RF, so this is this is quite useful. You've you've seen it if you've watched our um, Revolution Three series on the New World. You've seen us use this. Um, we had it set up for a while, uh, and so that showed you know a bit of how it works in practice. I'm going to show you uh, what it does. What this does essentially is you put RF power into it and it will wirelessly transfer that power to any machines or blocks that can take it um, within its radius, within its you know area of effect. So this is crafted in a casting table. It needs to be in a casting room and you need to have it, the table upgraded so that it's not, um, so that this little diamond is here and it needs to not be in the red circle. So you need to have your casting room built properly. The recipe is uh, four blocks of redstone, four iron ingots, and a block of glowstone. And I might have that in the wrong uh, the wrong way, but you also need uh, runes. So let's switch this into crafting mode, recipe mode. Click on this, and yeah, I do have it right. But now we need to put the runes in place. So Y equals zero means that we're on the same Y level as the casting table, and we need to place a uh, light green and then a uh, yellow in these two corners. So um, one, two, three forward and one to the left. So one, two, three forward and one to the left means we're actually going to be replacing this block of um, crystal and stone that you have to have there in order to get the casting room to form. We're going to replace it with this uh, Asvesti crystal root. And then on this side of the table, we're going to do the same thing over on this side. We're going to replace this block with the Katrino crystal root. And 
just so you, that you know, uh, when you if you read the lexicon, the Asvesti rune and, and energy is about movement, and the yellow Katrino is about like power and raw energy. So movement and energy they they line up with the thing that we're uh, casting, which is a device that transmits power. So now that we've got those in place, uh, it still doesn't look like. Wait, did I get that in the right place, or did I actually do that wrong? Blocks of redstone go in the corner. Iron ingots go in, in the middle. Oh, there it is. I couldn't see it because it's so like lightly colored, but it is up there now. And there we go. So it was so lightly colored in in, in the inventory, I could probably, you know, forget that it's there because uh, <laughs> it is a very you know lightly colored thing. Okay, so let me demonstrate this. I've got this creative capacitor from immersive engineering and I've got an HV capacitor also from immersive engineering. This capacitor is empty. Obviously the creative one has infinite power. So if I place the creative capacitor down over here and I place an HV capacitor down over here, if I put my redstone flux radiator on top of this, it's going to uh, search this area for blocks and it's going to start transmitting the power in those little red pulses. So as you can see there is power going into this. HV capacitor uh, wirelessly is pretty sweet so uh, you can use the radiator uh, if you've got a lot of machines that take RF all in the same room you can use this to power them all without having to have wires everywhere now if you don't like the the red uh, pulses maybe that would be a bit annoying for you more so than wires but if you don't want to have to hassle with too many wires uh, this is really good and you don't have to go all that far into Chromaticraft uh, to get it. You just got to get yourself uh, to the point of no of having the info fragment for it and having a casting room. I mean it's going to take some setup to get to this to get to this but uh, you know it's not going to be um, ridiculous and once you have this then you don't have to worry about uh, wires. It, it can connect to multiple things at the same time uh, you see, as I add more HV capacitors, it's sending out more uh, energy pulses. Will it go all the way over there? Yeah, it does. It goes over there. I don't actually know the maximum uh, radius on this. Let's, uh, is there any information about it? I don't see any information about it. But then it doesn't really matter what its maximum range is because um, th there are ways of increasing the range on, uh, on things like this. I'm not sure if you can increase the range on this with that, but we'll see in the future when we get to that point. Now there's an interest, uh, I gotta make a point about the um, the redstone radiator in regards to certain types of blocks. So there are um, blocks that only draw power when they're actively doing something and then in some mods, let's see, do I have that? Do I have buildcraft installed in this? Uh, is buildcraft here? I, th I think is. There are mods that have blocks that there it is build cap pipes let's grab a emerald kinesis pipe that draw power all the time even if they're not doing anything so what we had in our rev 2 uh, uh, rev 3 actually this isn't actually uh, drawing any power which it shouldn't be anyway um, let's see golden kinesis pipe but basically what we had was we had an emerald kinesis pipe set up. Maybe that's been fixed in the most recent updates, actually. It could have been. If you watch our Rev3 series, we had an emerald kinesis pipe that was hooked up to um, nothing. And it was constantly drawing power from the radiator. Uh, but it's not doing that anymore, so that's cool. Um, but, you know, that might have been fixed, and maybe this doesn't do that anymore. Maybe that was a uh, weird interaction with some other stuff that we had uh, attached or installed. Meteor shower goodness but uh, just watch it watch it um, if you're make sure that uh, this thing is only sending power to stuff that you want it to send power to um, so you know you can't just plug it in and forget about it in case it's drawing too much power um, yeah let me throw this down and I actually want to see something I want to see if you can turn this off with uh, like a redstone signal so Let's see, can we actually just slap a lever on the side of it? No, we can't. <laughs> I didn't think we could. Um, but let's see if we can uh, turn this off with like a redstone signal maybe. Okay, so I'm not actually sure if I'm turning off the radiator, if I'm turning off the creative capacitor in this example. So that might not actually be the best... Um... Am I going 
goodness, motor swords. That might actually be the best example. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that at this point the um, the redstone signal wouldn't be getting to the creative capacitor. So it looks like it can definitely turn these radiators off with a lever, which is great. Um, very, very useful. Okay, so uh, stupid meteor shower. I hope that's not too annoying uh, for you guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, uh, even with the meteor shower. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes uh, in the series. I, I'm going to try to do better at not, you know, spouting off fake information. If I don't know something, I'm, I'm just going to let you know that I don't know about it. Know it right now, and then I'm going to look it up and then let you know. Um, I've got to, you know, trying to stay on this production schedule is... is, is it means I gotta get a video up. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, anyway, I, I just don't want to upset Rick by telling you incorrect things. So, uh, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, stay tuned for the future episode. Join our Discord if you're interested, especially if you've got questions. And re watch the comments in case Riker replies. <laughs> I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out. <laughs>